You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, Got an interesting one to talk about tonight. So uh, most of you probably know this guy named Greg Locke, right? He's this pastor, a hate preacher, televangelist type of guy has this big mega church and at this mega church he does nothing but speak very poorly of the people that he doesn't like and of course he's like a far-right christian conservative type of person right uh trying to keep it child friendly mostly in the way i'm describing him but you know there's nothing child friendly about what he said recently um you know what? I, I, I'll just I'll leave it blind and just walk into this blind and listen to what he has to say. I got this clip from Hemet Mehta, so thank you to Hemet Mehta for that. Also, uh, Drake Eldritch sent me the clip. Uh, the clip. I'm sorry. So um, credit to both of them. Let's listen to Greg Locke complain about something called the Dove Awards. It's a gospel music award, apparently, that ex- I had no idea it existed. All right. Check this out. Oops, sorry, hang on. Let me just change my outputs one second. Okay, there we go. And the Dove Awards has been plain about the fact that although they may not be getting any type of award, that they're certainly welcome to to attend the awards ceremony this coming Tuesday night at Allen Arena. Talking about a drag queen. A drag queen is being allowed to attend the ceremony. Okay? Not even performing. Not nothing. It's just there. Nashville, Tennessee. Listen. When the Gospel Music Association gets to a place where it is so cowardly, weak, and anemic... What is cowardly and weak about inviting people to the ceremony? I don't understand. This is crazy. By the way, while we listen to this, we're going to play some Pokemon Ultraviolet. It's a ROM hack of Fire Red. Let's me catch all of the Pokemon. And I am about to level up my Eevees. I have three of them. So, all right, let's keep listening here. That they would even let that demonic pervert stand in the parking lot. Wow, demonic, okay. Of one of their events. It shows you how sick, sorry, wicked, and vile. Because C- now, now they're not just celebrating an abomination. They're not celebrating anything. They allowed this drag queen to attend the ceremony. Like, what? Now they're celebrating an abomination. Sorry, I was told it's a little bit loud. I apologize. Let me turn it down a little bit for you there. Okay, so they're celebrating an abomination, you say? Because now, now they're not just celebrating an abomination. Now they're celebrating an abomination that is publicly practicing witchcraft in front of everybody. I'm sorry? Witchcraft? What? What? What does a drag queen have to do with witchcraft, first of all? And second, publicly practicing it? How does one practice witchcraft, for that matter? Is it something that you practice? I thought it was just like a kind of a religion type of deal that people believe in or whatever. Okay. And the Dove Awards is talking about, oh, hallelujah. We just want to unite the body of Christ. 
because we do not want that wicked, abominable, godless nonsense in this house. I'm not standing for it. I'm not standing with it. I will call it out. I will support those that call it out. As far as I'm concerned, God can evacuate the building and burn the whole thing to the ground because that is wicked, vile, ungodly, and this pastor is not for sale, and I am not selling out to the sodomite witchcraft community. Holy shit, dude. He just said he wanted the building to burn to the ground where this just like this drag queen was attending a ceremony. Oh, that is insane. Jesus, dude. This guy's got problems. Why is he so angry? Honestly, what is it in him that makes him so mad? 24-7. It's crazy. By the way, George Takei actually called this out, funny enough. Um, he tweeted about it, and he also, I think on Blue Sky, he posted something about it. On Twitter, he says, Preacher flips out over drag queen attending gospel music awards. Burn the whole thing to the ground. Um, I think on Blue Sky... I think that's where it was. He said, Snowflake says what? <laughs> oh, man. Greg Locke, dude, he is so sensitive. He can't handle anything, can he? He can't handle being even in the same room as somebody that he doesn't like, really? Isn't that censorship? Seems like it to me. I thought he was against censorship and all that junk, right? Only when it's convenient for him. Well, anyways, I wanted to watch the service that, you know, he held where he said that. Because there was some other crazy stuff he said in there, too. It wasn't just about drag queens and stuff. So let's give this a listen, see what he has to say. This is um, October 15th, Sunday service. Let's check this out. Why is it that we think that if the Holy Spirit birthed the church in power that somehow or another that power went away and the church is going to end in a lukewarm, mamby-pamby condition. Well, uh, okay, I think what he's asking is if the Holy Spirit, like, blessed the church or whatever and gave it the power to do crazy things, then why do we think that miracles don't happen today in a, such a literal, direct sense? You know, I was, I was reading just this morning shockingly just this morning in a major periodical a major devotional periodical that, that many of you and this is no shade that, that many of you read on a regular basis i mean it is probably one of the most well-known periodicals for daily devotions on the planet right daily being the operative phrase there now understand okay i don't know of any like daily devotional periodicals um i think he's hyping this thing up a little but okay saying something i was reading just this morning and it said does god still perform miracles today comma yes but not in the way that he used to because now god performs miracles signs and wonders through the simplicity of answered prayer and wow what a wildly long title is it just me or was that title entirely too long <laughs> And also, what's with the comma? Does he mean question mark? Greg is something else, man. So he's complaining right now because a daily devotional religious, like, I don't know, like periodical or whatever you want to call it, is saying that God does not perform miracles as um, overtly and obviously as describes in the bible so it's advocating for something called cessationism believe the belief that after jesus died all of the divine gifts died with him basically like all the speaking in tongues and the you know delivering people from demons and walking on water and all that other junk all of that went away and that you know cessationists use that doctrine as a method to get around the fact that miracles just don't exist and they should according to what the bible says it, it doesn't make any sense that they don't exist so uh greg Locke is not a cessationist he believes 
that he can speak in tongues and cure people of illnesses and the whole nine yards. It's crazy. When I say cure people of illness, I mean, oh God, I have to show an example now. Hold on one second. Uh, okay, so we've got a, a deliverance handbook. I covered this not too long ago. The, he's got a deliverance ministry, by the way, is exorcisms. So he's got this deliverance handbook here that talks about all of the demons that exist and how to exorcise those demons from people or whatever. All right, so let's just take a look at some of the, the demons in the list. Let's see. The demon of witchcraft, the demon of Wiccan, the demon of black or white magic, the demon of Charlie Charlie, the demon of Bloody Mary, the demon of Ouija boards. Zozo is this demon's name, apparently. The demon of potions. There's one in here. Uh, I think there's the demon of bedwetting and um hysteria <laughs> i mean it gets really crazy right and <laughs> god dude greg Locke actually came out in 2022 this is uh early april 2022 all right i gotta there we go he claims that he's capable of curing people of all kind you know bipolar disorder and a anything i know what your doctor says and i don't care what the news media says I know what your doctor says. You know why some of you have demonic activity? You've given them legal authority because you believe the medical diagnosis. Okay, this is, you know, when people were talking about COVID. So you sh you're not supposed to believe the medical diagnosis of COVID, apparently, or anything else. Huh? You believe the medical diagnosis. You say, we have brother life. You're not a doctor. Nope, not even a nurse yet. I do have a PhD, preach hellfire damnation every time I can. But I'm going to tell you something. What a, what a nutcase, dude. I'm sorry. Some of you have given the devil legal authority and grounds and rights to your life because you believe the medical diagnosis when a doctor looks you in the face and says, well, what you have is bipolar disorder. What you have is a spirit that needs to be cast out so you can have some peace is what you got. Okay, so just a minute or two later, check out what he says here. Can't feed themselves. So talking about walking into a mental institution. Messing all over, wetting all over themselves, moaning, screaming, crying, and all they do is keep them doped up on medication and keep them worse. All right, the medication is making people worse in mental institutions. Uh, totally, totally. Get them off that medication for about 45 hours and let me and the deliverance team walk up in one of them crazy houses with some Bibles and some anointing oil. And I'm telling you, we can cast out the spirit of multiple personality, insanity, madness, the lunatic spirit. I mean, you, nothing's stopping you. I Feel free. Go into these places, this hospital or whatever, anywhere. You know, go to a cancer ward at a hospital. Ask the person if, you know, you can pray over them. You got to ask first. Don't just walk in and do that shit. And if they say yes, then cure them of cancer. And boom, you know what? You got a believer like that in me. I will suddenly believe just like that. But isn't it interesting that that never happens? It never works that way? Weird, huh? Anyways, Gre that's Greg Locke's belief. He believes that he's capable of... Um, curing people, I guess, of any ailment at all, any ailment. And he flipped on that. He used to be a cessationist. So anyway, let's keep listening to him here. I was reading just this morning, and it said, does God still perform miracles today, comma, yes, but not in the way that he used to, because now God performs miracles, signs, and wonders through the simplicity of answered prayer. And it's not quite as public or demonstrative, and so what God does today can easily be ruled out by skeptics, because God has chosen to focus his efforts and his power in different areas other than miracles, signs, and wonders. Okay, did he really memorize that whole paragraph? I'm skeptical of that. Um, that sounds like it was like spoken in Greg's verbiage in his language. So I think he just made all of that stuff up. Yeah, I mean, it is easily dismissed by skeptics. But you know what, Greg? You claim to be capable of curing bipolar disorder or whatever. 
Cancer, presumably. Do it. All you got to do is do it, cure it once. And everybody is a believer suddenly, just like that. That is blasphemous. It's blasphemous to acknowledge the fact that people don't have uh, powers like they use, or like the Bible said the early apostles did or whatever, or that Jesus used. That's blasphemous. Now, I don't care if you read the periodical of, of the paper every single day. I, I don't care if you do your, your devotions with them. But I'm telling you, that is dangerous theologically because what it's teaching us is this. The church started in power, but it ends with no influence. It started in power, but ends with no influence. What does that mean? I don't understand. I mean, what he's saying is the church can still perform miracles, like actual physical real miracles. That's simply false. I mean... Anybody can see that, plain as day, right? Why would God crank something up with dunamis miracle working power only to allow it to pass away and then the church decay into the eons of history because it started great, but it ended in foolishness? Well, that's a good question. I've got another one for you, Greg. Why would God write in the Old Testament that the prophet was going to come I'm sorry, uh, the Messiah was going to come and take political control over the region, over Israel or whatever, and then spark Armageddon. That was what the Messiah was going to be. And then Jesus came along, bebopping down the road, and died without actually fulfilling that role. That's weird, huh? Did God change his mind on that? What's that all about? Even stranger, why did Jesus, while he was on the cross, according to the biblical narrative, yell out, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he was dying, why did that happen? A lot of questions here. A lot of questions. So I find it interesting that the book of Acts ends in chapter 28 with no conclusion with no end, no stopping point, no any of that. It's one of the only two books. Matter of fact, there's only two books in the Bible. I'm going to teach you something. There's only two books in the Bible that do not have an abrupt ending. Jonah and Acts. That don't have an abrupt ending? So he's saying two books in the Bible. What does he mean? That two books that don't have like a conclusion that makes sense? The book of Jonah and the book of Acts. Interesting. Well, actually, the book of Mark doesn't have a you know, uh, satisfactory conclusion either. It was the first gospel written, and it just kind of stopped, it, oddly. Like, it didn't make any sense. And, you know, religious Christian monks back in the day didn't like the fact that the book of Mark just abruptly stopped like that. So they added on to it. Uh, they added, like... 15 verses or something. I don't remember how many. And completely changed the tone and the context and the everything. It didn't even sound like Jesus speaking. Like, it's so very obviously forged. And uh, plagiarized or whatever. No, I guess it'd be a forgery, not a plagiarism. Yeah, it's very obviously a forgery. And Almost no Bibles include that anymore. It's the part that Greg uses as the basis for his claim that he can deliver demons from people and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, there's no basis to believe that that's real at all. Do you know why Acts does not have a 29th chapter because we are the fulfillment of the 29th chapter of the book of Acts. Or maybe we lost it. You ever consider that one? Maybe it's just missing. Because it's like old as sin? Because the miracle signs and wonders are still taking place to this very day. And if you don't believe that, you do not believe a plug nickel of the New Testament whatsoever. Because the church started in... Don't believe a plump nickel? Is that what he said? You don't believe a plump nickel? Hang on, I gotta step back and listen to this. Because we are the fulfillment of the 29th chapter of the book of Acts. Because the miracle signs and wonders are still taking place to this very day. And if you don't believe that, you do not believe a plug nickel of the New Testament. A plug nickel? I don't know what he's saying. Plug nickel? What is a plug nickel? I've never heard that term in my life.
Testament whatsoever because the church started in power and it is God's will that it ends in power. It ends in influence and power. It's the reason people of the world and of the culture and of religion hate the church because the church, she is the most powerful organization and organism on the planet. It's the only group. Wait, the church is the most powerful organism on the planet? of people we are the only institution that has the authority of god's word the power of jesus name and the infusement of the holy spirit we are the only one so why is it that the most wait we are the only one is he saying that like he greg Locke, and his church are the only christian church or is he saying christianity is the only group out there that operates as an organism or something powerful institution on the planet is dead as a hammer why is it that statistically the church in this nation is dying? It's not because of a lack of God's power. Maybe it's because you suck. Maybe it's because you're a nutcase. You ever consider that one? You ever knock that one around the old noggin? Maybe you hate so much that God walked away from it and said, I'm done with this. This is awful. If you read the New Testament, Jesus very obviously didn't hate anybody for anything, except for maybe the Pharisees and the scribes Jesus was oh and the money changers I guess he hated the money changers Jesus was a peace loving guy didn't care about any of this junk and Greg Locke is coming in pretending to be like Jesus and screaming about how much he hates people I mean you heard at the beginning he's complaining about drag queens and stuff it's because of a lack of appropriation on our part of God's power what, we're not using the power he gave us? Is that what he's saying? But as I told him in a different message and context last night at Simple Church over here in White House, you better know that I'm not discouraged about it one bit. You know what God's doing? He is thinning out the ranks and raising up an army, and now we're starting to figure out who is serious about the power and the gifts of the Holy Ghost of Almighty God. He's thinning out the ranks and creating an army. That is psychotic. Is it just me? There is... This whole thing is like deeply disturbing to me. What is happening right now? So for the rest of my life, I am going to invest time into pastoring serious people. Okay, well, you're going to have to get serious yourself first, bud. And if you are not serious about following Jesus in life and to the death, then this is probably not a congregation that you want to be a part of because I'm not worried about your uncomfortableness and I'm not worried about your feelings. I'm worried about your faith. And at the end of the day, this is going to be a church of power. This is going to be a church of tongues, of miracles, of signs, of wonders. Of it, it, I don't care about your feelings, says the guy who literally cries like 19 times per service. Seriously. It sounds like he's starting to kind of tear up a little bit now. Um, not that I think there's anything wrong with that, but I think he's most likely using it as a manipulation tactic to try to get people to feel more emotional about what he's saying. Of salvation, of baptism, of deliverance, of baptism in the Holy Spirit. It is going to be a place where God says, I started my church that way, and I'm going to end my church that way. The church was birthed in victory, not to be left to die in defeat. And so all it was birthed in victory, not to die in defeat, okay? All of this nonsense, oh, look what he did in the book of Acts. He just doesn't work that way anymore. Tommy Rock, that's foolishness. Tommy Rock? Is that what he said? God, I hope I'm not saying slurs. It seems like the kind of thing Greg Locke would do, right? Plug Nickel and Tommy Rock are not slurs, are they? Please tell me they're not. You, you oh, Tommy Rot. Tommy R-O-T. Okay, I, I just, yeah, this guy is confusing as it gets, man. By the way, Anerical, thank you for being a member. 13 months, new milestone, great casts, and much love to the feline overlords. Hail Bass, absolutely. Stampede, 122. So Locke tried to take on the helmsman. Of the USS Enterprise. Yes, absolutely he did. Sulu. Lieutenant Hikaru Sulu. Is that really? He was a 
I didn't know he had a first name. I thought he just had a last name, Su uh, Sulu. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he did, and he lost. Do you think Greg believes anything he preaches, or is some of it extreme just to get attention? Uh, I think that he believes the vast majority of what he preaches, but he slips in extreme messages from time to time to get that attention that he so desires. Um, and, and he openly lies, too. I've heard him blatantly flat-out lie before on, you know, on, uh, on my streams or whatever. I'm very confident that he, from time to time, plays things up and straight up lies just to get people's attention. Zada Hugla, for someone who hates drag queens, Greg Locke has a very colorful shirt, right? I know. It is a super colorful, colorful shirt, right? I don't know if you can tell. It may be too small to see, but it's got... Here, let me just see if I can blow it up a little bit. It's got a lion in it, like a lion's face is right here. I'm circling it with my mouse. He's got a lion's face in his shirt. Wild shirt, man. Love that guitar, though, in the background there. Can't even read a chapter in the book of Acts without the Holy Ghost being all over it. I mean, he's just bleeding all over the context theologically and practically. Miracle, 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 miracle. Deliverance, healing, signs, wonders, all throughout the whole book. And then all of a sudden... The book comes to an end, and people are like, well, you know, that's just the way God used to work in the Bible. Well, I mean, if you see a single book that describes all this crazy stuff that happened, and none of the other books back that account up or seem to um, exhibit those qualities or anything like that in any way, it might be safe to assume that maybe that book was an outlier, and that's not really representative of what actually happened. Like maybe the writer of the book of Acts was kind of full of it and playing it up a little bit. I mean, that couldn't possibly be it, could it? I mean, that's what um, anthropologists and... Um, God, what, what would you call... What, what PhD would you go for to understand? Would it be a theology degree? I don't think so. Probably not, right? To, like, research the Bible and understand the origins of, like, the languages and everything else. That's what those types of people have come to conclude. That the book of Acts and the last few verses of the book of Mark, stuff like that, is all fake, basically. A lot of those stories are fake. A lot of the stories in the book of John are also Completely fake. I mean, uh, personally, I think that Jesus probably existed as a person. I don't know, you know, how much of the stories we hear in the Bible are accurate to real life. But, I, I mean, and nobody knows. We will never have any idea how accurate they were. But uh, a lot of the stories in the Bible are very easily debunkable. Just based on the fact that Every other copy of every book that we have tells a very specific version. And then we have this one outlier over here that tells this wild version about speaking in tongues and faith healing and all this stuff when nothing else backs that account up. You got to come to a certain conclusion at some point. Well, God used to save people in the Bible too. Does that mean he's not saving people today? Well, you know, that's just the way Jesus did things in the Gospels. That's because Jesus is still doing it today. He has no basis to believe this. Like, this is a, a theological position that he has no reason to hold. None. He's the embodiment of the God. He got to the message yet. I'm just telling you. The church was birthed in power. So why do we think that that power's gone somewhere? Stop being ashamed of the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, I mean, Jesus walked on water and healed the sick and raised people from the dead, according to the gospel accounts, right? People aren't doing that today. As much as Greg wants you to believe that he is, he's not. This is completely made up. So that's why people think that. That's why people believe in cessationism, because miracles are not performed today. 
It'd be a good thing for God to show up, show out, and embarrass all of us on Sunday morning on the live stream. Just let the Lord take over. Just let the Lord have his way. That'd be great. Yeah, do it. Show me something. Show me some real tangible miracle that I can wrap my head around, and you got a believer just like that. Is it weird that that's never happened to anybody else? Joni Cummings, uh, WTF, Greg Locke looks demonic. He's gone off the deep end. People like Greg Locke are the reason I don't go to church, right? Well, in all fairness, not all churches are absolutely ass backwards like this. Um, some of them are just like there for community and, you know, building friendships and working together and all that other stuff and giving people some reason to keep on going. I mean, if that's your church, then fine. I don't have any real issue with that. But Greg Locke, you know, and other hate preachers and extremists like him definitely ruin it for a lot of people. That is for sure. Sometimes we just got to get out of the way and say, God, we are your people. Show up and wreck us with your presence. That's what she said. That's what they did in the book of Acts. And it's crazy because I was raised in a denomination, and it's not just a Baptist situation. I, I was raised around such conservative, cessational, theological persuasions. and pers Yeah, the cessationist thing. That's what I was talking about. Positions that they, they would simply read the book of Acts as a historical narrative. Yeah, I mean, those were written as historical narratives, so that makes sense, yes. There are different genres of writing in the Bible. Like some of the writing genres are written as historical narratives. Some of them are written as um, allegories or poetry. I mean, there are a billion different types of narratives or types of uh, genres of writing or whatever in the Bible. There's even apocalyptic genre. Some are intended as historical narratives, some aren't. So yeah, the book of Acts though it has complete nonsense from beginning to end, is written as a historical narrative, nonetheless. This is what God did, but now this is what God is incapable of accomplishing now. Who put no, no one said God is incapable of doing it. He just said he isn't doing it. Those limitations on God. God put those limitations on God. Are you kidding me right now? Really? Cheers for no reason. You're up and coming, bro. I appreciate that, uh, Maximus. Thank you so much. Glad you like my stuff. Who was it that shackled the hands and feet of God and duct taped his mouth and said, we're sorry, but we don't give you permission to do now what you used to do then because back then it fit the context, but today it blows our culture reality out of the water and it makes us uncomfortable. Look, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. Just perform a miracle. That's all I'm asking. You see, when you boil it down like that in the basics of kindergarten Christianity, it really does sound heretical and blasphemous, does it not? I mean, what pastor has the right to stand up before his congregation and say, I'm sorry, everyone. God's alive. He's just crippled. Nobody said that. What are you talking about? You'll never get out of a wheelchair because God happens to be in one. What? What is he talking about right now? I'm just lost. God in a wheelchair? What? Nobody ever said that. People are just pointing out that God does not perform miracles today. Oh, my God. Did I just throw... I just threw away the amulet coin. Okay, good. I can, uh, I have a reverse thing, like a rewind. So I just rewound. That was scary. Oh, he's getting this crowd whipped into a blood frenzy. They're upset over that one. God's not in a wheelchair. Uh, we think the throne room of God is like a geriatric unit. Hmm? Don't dial me now. I ain't even started preaching yet. I I'm just confused. I'm not like angry or, or quote-unquote dying on you i'm just like lost god walking them church with a with some crutches on 
Huh? What is wrong with us? What's wrong with us? You ever notice I'm just meddling for a minute? I'm about to take my watch off and preach. I'm scared I'm going to look at it. You know, and, and look, I know that God has a process by which he heals some people. Okay? As your faith is, so be it unto you. I know that all infirmity is not a demon, but there is a spirit of infirmity. Oh, my God, dude. Not all infirmity is a demon, but there is a demon of infirmity. What? Like I said, the dude believes that literally everything is a demon. And I'm actually surprised to hear him stand here and say, not all infirmity is a demon. That actually blows me away. I, I don't know what infirmity he thinks is not a demon. I mean, we just looked at the list and saw that, like, bedwetting is a demon. The demon of bedwetting. Or I guess the demon's effects are bedwetting. He thinks literally everything is a demon. What? But you know what's interesting? Tell me, Greg. Especially when we've been going through all of this uh, county nonsense. County nonsense. He's probably referring to the fact that the county that he's in is suing him for the overtime that the police department had to put into, um, or that, that they had to put in to deal with his gigantic crowd he held a huge convention at his church and it brought in like i don't know eight thousand people or something I, I don't know how many exactly a lot and uh you know he just like let the county foot the bill for the traffic um you know what wh what's the word i'm suddenly forgetting it. for all of the traffic flow the you know helping traffic figure out where to go i i suddenly cannot think of the word Anyway, uh, the county is suing him for that. And also, he's refusing to do basic stuff like follow sound ordinances and building ordinances, stuff like that. So, directing traffic. Yeah, traffic directing. Anyway. Do you know one... It's, it's funny. Did you know one of the biggest... This is crazy. You know, I, I know sometimes legality has a lot to do with this. Just follow it. Okay, this is going to be psychotic, isn't it? Did you know one of the largest expenses that churches in the American landscape, it's not this way for the most part overseas, but churches in the American culture, you know one of the largest expenses we have in buildings? The amount of handicap parking and handicap accessibility that we have in our churches. Okay. Now let me make... What, what why is anybody measuring that as an expense? What a bizarre thing to measure as an expense. It should... Is that even true? That doesn't even sound true. He said it's not true overseas. Why would it be untrue overseas, but true in America? What? Oh, my God, dude. I got to write this down. I got to take this down and uh, download this clip. Let's see. 123... Okay, um, Greg thinks the biggest expenses for churches is handicapped parking. I think the term now is disabled parking, not handicap. I, my dad was handicapped when I was little, but I think that handicap is like a deprecated term that isn't really used much anymore, except for by like an older generation. Make you mad for a minute, and I don't really care. Oh, please make me mad, Greg. I'd love that. I got a humongous heckin' chonker of a cat in my lap now, too, so. Oh. So, yeah, there she is, see her? She's a good kitty. She's just a chonker, that's all. Okay, let's keep listening. Why is it you pull up to a church that says they operate in faith and you have 50 handicapped parking spots? Uh, because people get old? Ain't nobody laid hands on them handicapped folks yet. Oh, yeah, because he can just pray away the need for a wheelchair. He can simply pray over them, and suddenly they're good. They stand up right out of it, no matter how old they are. Hey, she's trying to get my food that I was eating a minute ago. No matter, get down, kitty, you can't have the food. No matter how old they are, or no matter what their infirmity, quote-unquote, or whatever, it doesn't matter. 
in Greg's mind, he can pray it away. Like I said, the dude can go to a cancer ward anytime he wants and prove it to us. I don't care what Twitter says. You can get mad all you want to. Fold your arms, stick your lips. I'm not mad. I just think you're being ridiculous. I don't like insulting people. You know what? I Like I said, I'm not like the kind of person that insults, so I will let Greg do it for me. Hang on. Let me get the cat down. Sorry, kitty. Can't stay up here because you're all over the place. Yeah, I'll let Greg do the insulting for me. I'm dumber than a box of rocks in a lot of areas. Facebook just makes people think I'm smart. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate your input on the subject. Sal, out, pooch him out. I don't care. I'm so unafraid of what anybody in this tent thinks about me right now in my life. I could care less. <laughs> but we, we just expect that people are going to leave church the same way they came to church. Well, we ought to start having some signs out there that don't have, you know, like, like handicap accessibility, people in a wheelchair. We ought to start having signs of a wheelchair laying down and somebody just walking up. Uh, what? Well, Pastor, I think you're being insensitive. I think you just don't have any faith is what I think. Nobody thinks you're being insensitive. We just, we just think that you were right when you said this. I'm dumber than a box of rocks in a lot of areas. That's all. Nobody thinks you're being insensitive here, Greg. I mean, we, we, we celebrate sickness in the American church. Well, so-and-so said they had cancer, and so we're just, we're, we're just going to believe God for you. But why don't you stop the whole service and lay your hands on them and believe God for them? Call that spirit of infirmity out of them. Spirit of infirmity. This is, like, so predatory, man, this whole faith healing bit. Again, somebody asked me, does Greg believe most of what he says, right? <clears throat> Who was that? Somebody somebody asked me that. RJ asked me that. Does Greg believe what he says? Um, I think he does most of it. Even this stuff about faith healing, I think he believes a lot of it. If not all of it. He just likes to, you know, insult other churches. Like, that's his favorite pastime. And it's a quick and easy way to do it by claiming that they wouldn't have any disabled people if he just or if they just, you know, partook in deliverance ministry exorcisms and prayed over people. Just absurd, man. You see, now that we go into mass deliverance once every Sun the first of, uh, month of uh, every Sunday night, the first of the month, we're going to have more things like that going to start happening in the services. I guarantee it just is because people can't wait. People just ready. People just showing up ready to pop because they need some healing. They need some deliverance. You know why? You know, it makes me wonder, does Greg have, uh, like, what do you call, um, uh, you know, disabled parking? Or does he have, like, disabled uh, ramps, you know, for people to go up in wheelchairs or whatever? Does he have any of that stuff? Probably not, right? And he says, look, have you noticed we don't have anybody that's in a wheelchair in here? Well... That's because you don't have any accessibility for wheelchairs. I mean, I don't know that that's what's going on right now. I'm just assuming, but I think it's a pretty safe bet. Because miracle signs and wonders still follow them that believe. Still follow them that believe. I haven't even watched that stupid movie, Cessationist, yet. Okay, I'm going to watch it. Somebody sent me the link the other day. They said, you've got to watch this. It's got some of your friends in it. I, okay, I don't know that movie, but you know what? I'm going to write that movie down, and maybe I'll watch it myself cessationist interesting okay let's see cessationist movie I'll, I'll check youtube for it first and see he's like i'm surprised it don't have you in it because it like talks all around you and i said you know why they don't have me in it because i used to be one of them and they don't want to bring attention to the fact that i opened my eyes like a little puppy and i came out of that heretical nonsense right totally they didn't mention you because they're too afraid that you're going to expose them for who they are or some other nonsense. I'm just saying, I'm bothered. I'm getting to the text. Oh, he's bothered. He wanted everyone else to be bothered. I'm still preaching the book of Acts. I'm bothered that the American church is uncomfortable with the only thing that God is comfortable with. Dude, he loves talking shit about other churches, doesn't he? 
God is uncomfortable with a lack of life change. God God's uncomfortable with a lack of life change. Okay. Does that mean like, I guess he's saying that God wants you to just change the way that you operate. God is uncomfortable with a lukewarm condition. So uncomfortable, it makes him nauseous and he vomits the church out. And people get mad at me. Well, you ought not call out other preachers. You ought not call out other churches. You ought not be lukewarm because Jesus called them all out and said he's going to throw them up. Ah! This dude is so cringy. You, you have to realize the fact that there really are some churches that make God sick. That make him angry. Yeah, and those churches are the types of churches that allow drag queens to show up. Just show up to a ceremony, right? Am I somewhere in the ballpark here, Greg? I'm going to say something. Please say, say it. Lay it on me. I, I feel like I've not preached in forever, but I just, I just preached last night and the night before and Wednesday night. Uh, Tuesday. Is it this Tuesday? I think it's this Tuesday. Is that when the... Where's my man at? Is that when the Dove Awards are? The GMA, the Gospel Music Association Festival and stuff? Yep. Yep. And so this is the part that we opened with, I guess. I, I was wondering when it was going to come up. That's this Tuesday. Now, I don't care if you go. You can go all you want to. Yeah, I don't care if you go. You can go all you want to, but I'm going to talk mad shit about this for the next 20 minutes. So buckle up. But uh, do you know what the, the Gospel Music Association is tolerating these days? They got this dude. He ain't a chick. He just pretends to be one. Uh, that's accurate. It's a drag queen. Yes, drag queens are not trans people. They're just people who pretend to, to be somebody else and perform on stage. So, yeah, that, that's right, I believe. It, it is a drag queen, right? Not a trans person? Let me just double check that. Name was... Uh, hang on. Drag queen Flamey Grant. Um, let's see. Award-winning and billboard charting artist, Flamey Grant, is a shame-slaying, hip-swaying, singing-songwriting drag queen from Western North Carolina. Yeah. So, it's a drag queen. Oh, wow. Um, some of the, like, people apparently also searched for some of the Christian nationalist extremists I cover when they search for Flamey Grant. They must be covering her, talking or covering him, uh, Flamey Grant, talking about him and stuff. Okay, wow. All right, let's keep listening here. They call it his his entertain his stage name is Flamey Grant. You know what I'm talking about? No, I don't follow drag queen goings on uh, as closely as Greg. Apparently, I had no idea who this was. Is it weird to anybody else how closely Greg follows drag shows and stuff? You know, Amy, yeah, there he is. You know, Amy Grant, Flamey Grant. I don't know a whole lot about him. And uh, he's been telling me about it. We've been, we've been talking because he's been fussing against this gospel music association that somebody ought to fuss against. Amen. And so they're like, oh, you know, it's just it's no big deal. She, he, they, them, whatever. The only people in the Bible that made issues out of their pronouns were demons. Don't ever forget that. No one's making any issues out of anybody's pronouns. What is he even talking about right now? Had some kind of Bible belt song, went, went number one. It was on the contemporary charts. It was in the, the Christian gospel charts, and everybody was celebrated. Oh, oh, wait, really? Is that what happened? I wasn't sure. So, Flamey Grant is a drag queen performer who did a gospel song. Am I getting this right? His shirt is loud. Oh, absolutely. It's so cringy and terrible for real. I don't know why, but he's had some really loud outfits in the past year or so. He never used to be like this. I don't know what happened. Okay. Apparently, uh, Flamey Grant did a Christian song. I had no clue. It's just, it's just healthy entertainment. Flamey Grant. Oh, it's Flamey, all right, because the whole thing's going straight to a devil's hell. I can promise you that right, right now. Okay, well, let that happen if that's what's going to happen. I don't know why Greg 
has this weird obsession with calling people out directly and accusing them of stuff when he has no idea what's in their heart, what's going on in their head or any of that. Doesn't the Bible specifically say, what is it? Is it Romans chapter eight? Is that where it says it? Hang on. Got, got a Bible here. Let's see. Romans eight. I think that's where it is. Yeah. Romans chapter eight here. Um, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life set you free, blah, blah, blah. Um, wait, it, it's that verse about not judging lest ye be judged. Where is that verse? Hang on. Let me, let me look. I got to find this out now. Do not judge lest you be judged. Uh, Matthew 7. No, it's in Romans. Yeah, Romans 8. If you th Okay, so Romans 2, 1 to 24. If you think you can judge other, others, you are wrong. When you judge them, you're really judging yourself guilty because you do the same same things they do, so on and so forth. Wait, Romans 14. Um, who are you to judge the servants of someone else? It is their own master who will decide whether they succeed or fail, and they will succeed because the Lord is able to make them succeed. Right. Um, so I guess it was Romans 14, not, not Romans 8. My mistake. Point is, it's none of your goddamn fucking business, Greg. Leave people alone and let them live their lives the way they want to live it. If you don't like the way they're living it, suck it up. So I got interested. I, I, I found out that, uh, that the thing is on Tuesday, so I got interested. And I thought, you know, I, I ain't never, I've never Googled Flamey Grant. Mm, something's telling me that he has. It's kind of weird, right? Seriously. He keeps up with drag shows way more than I do to be aware of this in the first place. Never had any reason to. And if you Trying to convince us a little too hard, isn't he? You got that mess in your playlist. You got to get rid of it because it's an incantation to the devil. I can promise you that right now. And here's how an incantation to the devil. Right. I know that. I went to flamey grant dot whatever com dot queer dot whatever it is. You know, not everything. Oh, let me rephrase. You know, anything can be used as a slur, whether it's actually a slur or not. I could use the word schmoobly gong as a slur if I wanted. Could start referring to a specific demographic of people, certain race of people as schmoobly gongs, you know. And just like that, it's being used as a slur. If I refer to the boomer generation for the sake of statistics or whatever... I'm just referring to baby boomers in a scientific way. If I refer to boomers as, you know, people who are to be detested and hated and, and who are disgusting, blah, 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 that's using it as a slur. A slur is in the way it's used, not in the word itself, it seems to me. And Greg is very clearly using the word queer here as a slur, right? It's not intended to be used in the way that the queer community uses it. He's just trying to hurt people here. In your playlist, you got to get rid of it because it's an incantation to the devil. I can promise you that right now. And here's how I know that. I went to flamygrant.whatever.com.com. Dot dot queer dot whatever it is and everyone laughs at the fact that he's using a slur against the the, the lgbt community they call themselves that so don't get mad when i say it again i just don't like that he's using it as a slur that's all and so i, I went this this dude is dressed up like a woman right and that's not even half of it uh, painted up like a barn right Okay. 
Matter of fact, I'd give you permission to go to it right now. D do you know what the first thing that pops up? Oh, because Greg gives people permission on God's behalf, right? Greg is telling people it's okay to do this, even though it would ostensibly break God's laws, his commandments or whatever. He is issuing out God's forgiveness right now. That is fascinating. He, she, whatever. He's sitting at a table with tarot cards in his hand. <laughs> I don't even know if this is true. Look it up right now. Right now while I'm talking. Okay, you know what? Let's do it. Uh, what was it? Uh, hang on. Let me look it up. All right, flamygrant.com. Yeah, okay. I, I can see that. Sure. I think those are tarot cards. I'll give them that. Close this thing here. Uh, let's see. Just pull this up here. Fortune Teller by Flamey Grant. It's a play off of Amy Grant, apparently. I don't know who Amy Grant is, but... Anyways. Want the hot goss? Never miss the tea. Sign up for Flamey's occasional newsletter here. Anyway. Wow. Super interesting. So, yeah, okay. Greg is complaining about Flamey Grant having... Tarot cards, sure, I guess. A crystal ball off to the right. A new age table covering. New age table covering? I didn't see that. Wait. What's new age about this table covering? It's just got, like, stars on it and stuff. I don't understand. What does he mean when he says new age table covering? Right there. Dream catchers in his ears. And the Dove Awards has been plain about the fact that although they may not be getting any type of award, that they're certainly welcome to, ascend the, to, to attend the award ceremony. Oh, so Flamey Grant didn't even get an award. But Greg... Uh, I'm sorry, but the Dove Awards said you're allowed to be here. Wow. That is fascinating that Greg is throwing a huge fit over something so inconsequential and trivial. I got to write this one down, too. Let's see. 129. Uh, Greg complains about Flamey Grant's tarot cards. Oh, man. If there's something Greg Locke hates... More than anything on planet Earth, it is tarot cards. Oh, he hates those things so much. This coming Tuesday night at Allen Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. Listen, when the Gospel Music Association gets to a place where it is so cowardly, weak, and anemic that they would even let that demonic pervert stand in the parking lot. Yeah, this is where we opened right here. Of one of their events. It shows you how sick, sorry, wicked, and vile. Because now, now they're not just celebrating an abomination. They're not celebrating an abomination to begin with. They were just celebrating uh what i don't know what, what would you call it like celebrating religious music and it's not even from flamey grant now they're celebrating an abomination that is publicly practicing witchcraft in front of everybody uh how is flamey grant practicing witchcraft in front of anybody and the dove awards is talking about oh hallelujah we just want to unite the body of Christ. Yeah, it's mixture. I'm just talking a little bit. You see, I'm at a place in the life of our church where although controversially, as far as the politics are concerned, I'm, I'm, I'm really out of a, a lot of all of that. Yeah, so he uh, famously did this uh, sermon recently. I think it was called like Shifting Gears or something like that, the name of the service. And the whole idea is he's walking away from politics in his sermons entirely. He's not talking about it anymore. He's not going to 
involve any um, political conferences in his services or tent anymore. He used to hold political conferences at his tent. He's not doing it anymore, apparently. And here we sit, not a month after that, maybe two months, with him doing the same thing he was doing before, talking negatively about the political people that he doesn't like. But I, I, I just want you to understand that I'm measuring my words well because I want you to recognize the fact that I am so much for unity, but I am so against mixture that if when I purposely say things like this, it bothers you, I pray you never again darken the door of our congregation because we do not want that wicked, abominable, godless nonsense in this house. I'm not standing for it. I'm not standing with it. I will call it out. I will support those that call it out as far as as I'm concerned, God can evacuate the building and burn the whole thing to the ground because that is wicked, vile, ungodly, and this pastor is not for sale, and I am not selling out to the sodomite witchcraft community. This dude is so bizarre. Did anybody accuse him of selling out or, like, being for sale? It's weird how often he brings that up. Like, everything that he just said is just nonsense made to rile up his listeners over nothing. Nobody cares. I'm not! I'm not selling out to it. I don't know what that means. Selling out to what? And just because people change their convictions doesn't mean I'm going to change mine. Every bucket sits on its own bottom. Uh, what? Every bucket sits on its own bottom? You know, a lot of times parents change their convictions because of the way their kids and grandkids turn out. Well, I mean, parents come to realize that everybody's just a human and there's really no reason to hate anybody for anything. Sometimes they come to realize that, you know, this is just what it is. Like, my kid's gay and there's really nothing wrong with that, ultimately. And... All of that nonsense they spewed before about hating gay people for this or that or whatever was hateful, uninformed bigotry. That's it. Anyway, this guy is wild, man. He's right in the middle of a service uh, sermon right now, but I'm going to have to cut it off here. Sadly, I don't have any more time. If you want to see more of this, check out my Owen Unfiltered YouTube channel. I'm going to finish this exact same format, the game, the uh, Greg Locke, the everything. I'm going to be finishing it Wednesday and Thursday mornings. 10.30 a.m. is when it starts. That's a live stream. If you just want to see like the, the full thing, I upload edited versions after the fact on that channel. So check that out, too. Anyways, let's see. Where is the feather for Locke being paradoxical? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the context, but he's constantly paradoxical, so... Anyway, I appreciate the Super Chat Stampede and, and everybody else. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. It's been fun. And I will talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow morning. If not, I will see you guys next week, okay? All right, have a good one, everybody.